I want to point out that in addition to the common understanding we all have about the word righteous, there's actually a covenantal meaning for the word righteous. In fact, actually, uh, in scriptures, particularly in the Old Testament, the word righteous often is a code word. I don't mean to speak in code, but it often means to be in covenant relationship with God. So if you've made covenants with God, you are righteous. And if you keep your covenants, you are righteous. And if you look at what's going on here, what do these people do? They get baptized. They've made this covenant with Jesus Christ. And so that is being in the paths of righteousness. And notice that what do they do to help them stay in the paths of righteousness or to stay on a covenant-keeping uh, life path? They did establish a church among them. And if you think about our church organization today, the whole point of the church organization is not potluck dinners or road shows or all these things that we do. That is not the point, although those things might help. The main point of church is for us to gather together to reinforce the covenants that we have made. If you think about every week at church, it's about partaking the sacrament. It's a renewal of the baptismal covenant. So I want you to think that if you wonder, like, am I a righteous person? Well, are you in covenant with God? Then yes, you're righteous. No, we all make mistakes. I didn't say whether any of us were, like, without sin. That actually is not necessarily what's being mentioned here by the word righteous. It's about being in covenant with God. So if you are being purposeful and meaningful in your covenant making with God, that puts you in the camp of righteousness. And that is what's going on here in Alma 35, that the people that Ammon has gone to teach have become righteous, that is, they become covenant making, covenant keeping people, and they've established the church to help them stay in the paths of covenants or in the paths of righteousness.